Hey all, it's uh, Passion Week and uh, one of the most uh, in significant uh, portions of Passion Week is what's called the Upper Room Discourse and uh, that's one of the places we find that is in John chapter 14 and I just want to just want to encourage us, remind us a little bit about what Jesus had to say to the disciples on the night that uh, night that he was going to be betrayed before and the night before he was crucified. Um, he starts out uh, John 14 and he says, "Do not let your heart be troubled." And and it wasn't a suggestion. It wasn't just an encouragement. It, it's written as an imperative. It's a command. He was commanding them to not be scared. And it's the same thing that Jesus really commands for us today: to not be scared. Uh, not be afraid of what's going on around us. But uh, in the context of uh, the first Easter, I want to ask a question, answer the question, uh, why would they have been troubled? At this point, they've been with Jesus three plus years. They had had their, their, their uh, interactions with the religious leaders and, and, and different things had gone on that, that were not just perfectly, quote, normal. There were some things that were unsettling, but Jesus was always right there with them. Everything always worked out. So why would they be troubled? Well, that Jesus had just re had just revealed in uh, to them uh, that one of the disciples would betray him, would 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 betray him, and it would not necessarily turn out in a human perspective would not turn out well. Uh, we find that in John thirteen verses eighteen to twenty one, but also Jesus revealed to them right after that, <clears throat> John thirteen thirty three, that he was going to leave them. He had been with them this whole time, and the security was essentially found in his presence and him being there with them. Uh, but he was—he was, he very clearly told them, "I'm not going to be with you. I'm going to leave." And then to cap it all off, uh, in John 13:38, uh, Jesus reveals that Peter is going to deny him, the one who had made the great proclamation of faith. It's when he said, that, "Jesus, you—you you are the Messiah. You're the Christ." Um, who else would we follow? Uh, the one who was in many ways the spokesman for the group. Uh, Jesus said, you're going to deny me. And so within just a few, within just a short amount of time, they had been given information uh, that would really have, would have rattled them. And it was in that context where Jesus says, he commands them, don't be afraid, don't be troubled. But he didn't just leave them with that. He gave them reasons why they shouldn't be. And there are reasons that really we should grab onto, whether we're in this pandemic, pandemic that we're involved in right now and that we are really in bondage to, or whether just the normal events of life that cause us trouble. The same reasons that Jesus gave the 12 to not be troubled, they apply to us as well. He said, he, in, in short, he said, why shouldn't they be troubled? Well, because they were safe. Uh, John 14, 2 and 3, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you. And as we've talked about before, that's not Jesus going to heaven to build us a mansion. He says that in my Father's, um, in my father's mansion, there's many dwelling places. They're already there. The place he was going to to secure our safety, to secure for us a spot, was he's going to the cross. Jesus dying on the cross is what secures us a rightful place in relationship with the Father. And because he was going to the cross, they were perfectly safe. There was a place for them with the Father. But then also, <clears throat> John 14, 3, he assures them that he would return to them, he would welcome them, and then he would, he would, he would receive them so they would be with him forever. And notice the, the, the distinction there. He says that, that you'll be with me. Jesus, at the incarnation, came to earth to be with us. And he came to us. When Jesus returns, we will be taken to be with him, to be with him in his context, in, in, in his place. And so there's assurance that you, they didn't need to fear because they, that they and we would, once, we would go to be with Jesus. But then also, <clears throat> Jesus reminded them, um, not just for the future, but for right now, for the life that they would live until Jesus returned to get them, to take them to be with him is that they would not be orphaned. He wouldn't, leave, he wouldn't leave with them without somebody to care for them and to provide for them. And that person is the Holy Spirit. He promises in John 14, verses 16 to 18, that, uh, that he would send, give them the Holy Spirit and that he would be their help. He would be the helper and he would accompany them in this life. And 
as the helper, uh, Jesus identifies him in verse 17 as the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth would, would be with them, would, rise, would reside with them, and the same as he resides with us. We have the spirit of truth. If you're, if you're a believer, the spirit of truth resides within you. And you're sealed with him until the day of redemption. But also he goes on, verse 26, and he calls him the helper. That, that the Holy Spirit would be with believers, would be with the twelve, to help them along. Uh, to, uh, to enable them to accomplish the purposes of God. To enable them to walk with God. And it's the same thing as the, the Holy Spirit that indwells us. He is our helper. He enables us and empowers us uh, to live for Him. He, he, he empowers us to safety, and a, to, to spiritual safety, that we can't be separated from, from God. And Jesus gave these assurances not merely as reasons to not be troubled or afraid, but as a means for genuine, tangible peace. A, a settled contentedness, as it were, amid the mad chaos of the world that they were going to find themselves in. And they had no idea what they were going to face. As they followed Jesus after his death and his resurrection, they didn't know the persecution and the, and, and the struggles they would face. But Jesus promised them, promised them a place of perfect peace in the midst of that. It's the same thing he promises for us. And I would encourage you to read John chapter 14 as we go out and go through this uh, as we go through this Passion Week, as we, as we prepare for Easter, and as we, as we remind ourselves why uh, during this time and all times forward, we have no reason to be afraid.